Asia, as was said today, is not a monolith. A Asia has many countries, many cultures, uh, many languages, many different economies and markets, and even in the big countries. It's almost impossible for anyone to be an expert in Asia overall. So when com companies look, when investors look at a country, they don't just think about today. They need to think about tomorrow. And when you look at a country with a balance sheet that represents about 30% debt to GDP, and when you look at another country that's blown up their balance sheet, that's got a five times per capita deficit because of tax changes, you realize that those are long-term changes that are going to actually have ramifications. So we are in a situation where we do need to consider Canadian competitiveness. We're going to do that work and we're going to do it with an eye to making sure we're competitive in all aspects. So I think one of the ways that the Government of Canada and the respective provincial governments can uh, better listen to the voices of millennial youth across the country is through youth consultations. As the president of the Canada China Young Professionals Network, I hear this time and time again that young people want their voices to be reflected not only in the decisions of today, but the decisions that will affect them tomorrow and in the future. Uh, I'm here to say that actually there is a good deal, as Mark suggested, a good deal of thinking and effort uh, within government and hopefully even more to come with you, uh, private sector, public policy institutions, in taking a comprehensive and strategic view both of the present and future uh, Canadian relationship with Asia. Back in my experience growing up, the type of uh, social studies and history lessons I learned focused mostly on European history. I think it's important to develop curriculum that allows uh, young Canadians to understand the history of Asia and most, more specifically the history of specific Asian countries. There's a lot of sectors uh, that are, have, present huge opportunities for Canada and Asia. Um, everything from education, ag food, clean tech, advanced manufacturing, a whole range of different uh, um, sectors, at least six. So lo tons of opportunity. We domestically have put programs and policies in place to help these companies uh, with the talent, uh, financing, uh, and the support through our trade commission officers uh, and also uh, now making sure that when they do go abroad we make those connections and that they can succeed and solve problems. We know that China is entering into more of the, the elder age so uh, that you know related healthcare uh, technology capability uh, is uh, in huge demand. And another one is about technology. Today we heard a lot about uh, AI, you know, uh, technology innovation capability in Canada. And I think that actually will um, do a lot in the China market. We're trying to think about how we can have a more significant impact in Asia. So thinking about the educational sector, thinking about the tourism sector, places where we can actually see people get more comfortable with different cultures and more accepting of the fact that yes, our rule of law is different, yes, our systems are different, but yes, we both have a shared interest in ensuring that our citizens are more successful over the long term, and that's what trade does.